What's up my friends, welcome back. Today I've just took out this motor from an old washing machine and it's so old that it's not a brushless motor because nowadays uh, washing machines are using very silent and very controllable uh, DC brushless motors but this is a so-called universal motor and it's called like that because it works with both DC and also AC voltages and in this video I want to show you what we have inside how this kind of motor works and also how to wire it up because as you can see we have a bunch of wires and it might be a little bit complicated to understand how to wire this up and finally we'll connect it to some voltage and make it work and also control the speed and maybe like that you will learn something new and even give some use to some old motors like this one also I want to compare it with a different type of motor which is also a brushed motor like this one because this one has brushes but that motor also uses permanent magnets because this one doesn't have permanent magnets so we'll make a compare between those two types of uh, motors so guys I hope that you learned something new so let's get started hey guys as you all know this video is sponsored by PCBWay and don't click away just now, because I want to tell you how you could win free coupons up to $200. So if you go to the link below, you will see that is the 8th anniversary of PCBWay. And you can get free coupons up to $200. And if you scroll down, you can find 50% off for 3D and CNC services. You could also enter the lucky draw and win sensors, microcontrollers, soldering machines and so on. And you could also submit your own video. And each approved video could get from $5 up to $50. So you can check right now the anniversary page and also take advantage of the PCBWay incredible services and quality for PCBs because I use them all the time for my projects and I get the results that I want. So you should do the same. So guys, let's continue with the video. What's up my friends, welcome back. Okay, so the first part that I want to explain to you is what are the main components that we have inside of this motor. As you can see, to make it easier, I took the wires out. So let me just explain what we have here and then explain you how this works. Okay guys, so basically this exact motor has four main parts, but we don't care about this part here because this is just a tachometer, which basically counts the ticks. So the washing machine could know the speed of the motor and like that it could control the voltage applied to the motor to control its speed. So we don't care about this. But then we have three main parts. The first part, as you can see here on this representation, are the coils, uh, the coils that are connected to the stator. So those would be this one here. So we have one here and another one on the other side. And this won't move. Then we have some other coils which are connected to the rotor, which is the part that spins. And those coils are inside and those are connected to these connectors here. I will show you in a moment what we have here inside. And the third part are the brushes, which are these components here. And these are in contact with the rotor. And like that is how we apply the voltage to the rotor in order to spin. So those are the main three things, the coils of the stator, the coils of the rotor, and then the two brushes. Actually, to understand even better, I have this other motor here. Maybe once we test this big one, I will also open it up to see what we have inside. But since it's very difficult to see inside, I have this other motor here, which is also a universal motor. As you can see, we have the stator with the two coils, this one here and this one here, and this will create a magnetic field. And then we have the rotor. And the rotor has a bunch of coils here and also the magnetic conductors, which are these metal uh, sheets here. And then we have these contacts. These are copper contacts. And here are where the brushes will touch. And let me just show you uh, one of the brushes. And it's this one here. As you can see, it will be in contact with those uh, metal connectors. And like that, we pass the voltage to the coils and we make it rotate. These brushes usually are made out of uh, metal graphite, which is a very conductive material. And also it will wear out when the motor is spinning and once in a while you have to change this but these are very uh, very low cost so this is one of the brushes okay guys so now we know the parts of this universal motor let's understand how it works and to do that we first understand we will first have to understand how a brush dc motor works but with permanent magnets and then we pass to this uh, this one that uses coils instead of magnets the working principle is very easy we have two type of magnets on each side one is south, the other one is north. And as you know, north with north will repel and north with south will attract. And also south with south will also uh, repel. So using this uh, commutator here, which is are the copper connectors that we have seen before, these ones, 
we apply voltage at the coils and because it's spinning we can change the polarity because when we touch this one and this one it will apply south and when we touch this one with the other one it will apply a north polarity magnetic field to the coils so like that as you can see blue with blue with repel and also red with red with repel and like that we always push the rotor in the same direction and if we invert the wires it will spin in the other direction in order to create the magnetic field we have to apply voltage to the coil so we apply positive here and negative here but at the same time we have to apply that voltage also to the brushes in order, in order to make it spin so what we do is usually to apply voltage positive voltage to one coil we exit on the other and we connect this coil to one brush and the other brush will go to the negative connection of the battery or the voltage that we are using or to the ac if we are using ac so basically it will be something like this so we enter through one brush uh, then we connect the coil and we close the loop inside of the coils of the rotor we exit on the other brush we connect to one of the coil the stator coil and then we go to the other coil and we close the loop and we go to the battery so basically we create the magnetic fields with these coils and then we apply voltage to the rotor in order to spin let me just show you a different approach to this uh, schematic and representation as you can see the connector that i have for this motor has seven wires so this might be a little bit difficult for you to know which one is which and how to connect it that's why i want to show this other approach of the connections in order to understand how to connect each one and then with the multimeter i will show you how you could find each uh, of the stator connection the coils and the tachometer because as you can see these are the same color so we don't know which one is which but using the multimeter we can detect that and uh, write it down on a paper and then make the connection so let me show the, the next approach okay so why do we have seven wires coming out of this connector well the first two wires are for the tachometer which are these two here and we don't use this because usually this are is used for uh, counting the speed measuring the speed and we don't need that in order to control it but if you want to make a precise control of this motor you should use this signal to control the speed uh, to measure the speed and then control the voltage applied to the motor in order to control at the speed that you want and then we have the input of one of the brushes and the other input for the other brush the left brush and the other brush the right brush but then we have the coils but we also have the connection between the coils so we have the positive side of the coil the negative side of the coil and the middle connection of the coil so how do we connect this well let me just show you this I mark this with an X because we don't use the tachometer and also this one because we don't need the middle connection of the coils all we have is to apply positively to one side of the brushes we connect that in series with the coils and then we connect negative to the other coil of the stator so basically that's how we make this rotate so we need to use just two wires and then connect these two one together so let's just do that to the motor and apply voltage and control it okay guys so my connector has only blue color for the wires but if you rotate the motor you can see that we have some color coded here for the wires red very light uh, blue some very dark blue brown and black but if you don't have this you have to use your multimeter in low resistance mode so it will beep each time that you make a short circuit and then go step by step and marking down which wire is which but as you can see first of all these two wires that are coming from the tachometer are connected to the first and the second connector we can just check that this one is the first and the second connector there you have it so the first two are the tachometer so we can mark them down then we go to the other two but we can already see that one is going to one of the brushes so this one will be the third pin so the third pin is the brush uh, l so the left brush and then if we spin it we rotate it we go to the other pin which is brown which is the no not brown the blue wire is connected to this other brush so basically the third and the fourth pin are for the brushes so obviously the brown and the back wire will be for the left and for the positive and negative side of the coils and that's really difficult to check because we don't have an internal connection to the coils but just by eliminating the other one tachometer brushes we'll, we are left with just two so basically these are the, the connections for the coil and if we have a seven, seven wire we have all, also the mid connection the cables are a bit long so let me just cut the, the one that i don't use the first one is not connected so i'll cut it out then the first two these ones are the tachometers so we don't use that so we cut it like that and then also the four wires that we need are a bit lo too long so let me just cut it to size maybe here 
Okay, so remember that we have to make a bridge between the entrance of one coil and also the brushes. So in my case is the fourth wire and the fifth wire. So we make a bridge right here, like this. So as you can see, the fourth and fifth are connected together. And now we apply positive voltage and negative to these wires, which are the first entrance of one brush and the exit of the coils. So let's just apply that with the supply and control the speed of this motor, finally. Okay, so finally let's apply voltage and control the speed. I've placed some tape here so we can see the rotation. So right now I'll apply uh, starting from 12 volts and increase the voltage because with lower than that it won't even rotate. So we apply positive to the first uh, brush. And then we just connect negative to the exit of the coil. And now we turn on the supply. And there you have it. It rotates, so let's just increase the voltage. Right now I'm at, at 33 volts. Let's just go up to 50. There you have it, 50 volts. And now let's just go to the maximum, which is 59 volts, because this supply can do more than that. As you can see, we have a lot of speed. Just turn it off. Let's connect it again and see the maximum power. Okay, so here we have the voltage, the current and the maximum power that is using. So let me just uh, power it on at 59 volts and see the power. As you can see, it had a peak at 70 watts and now we are stable at around 40 watts. So it's not, it's not using that much power with DC voltage. So guys, that's how you can control this huge motor from an old washing machine universal motor that's how you connect it that's how it works and that's how you can control it with dc voltage i don't have a dimmer right now so i'm a little bit uh, uh, scary to connect directly 220 volts ac to this motor because i don't know what it will happen but maybe we'll try that as well in just a moment but by now you should understand how this works and also the difference between this and this other type of motor which is basically the same it also has a rotor uh, and a copper connectors, but the magnetic field is made by uh, permanent magnets all around instead of using the coils to create that magnetic field. This is from an electric cart. The principle of uh, the working principle is the same, but the magnetic field is made with permanent magnets. I hope this will help you to understand how these type of motors work. Well, guys, for the final test, I've made a very simple AC dimmer with a triac and a diac. This is a very simple circuit and I will show it to you in a moment. And now we'll connect it directly to AC and you will see the power that this can give with AC. Actually, I was a little bit afraid to connect it directly. And since I don't have a dimmer, I've made a circuit that I found online with just a few resistors, capacitors, a triac and a diac. Let's just test it with AC voltage now. So here we have our triac circuit for the dimmer. We have the potentiometer to control the speed. And this is our 220 volts AC supply. Let me just pour it on and control a little bit the speed because I'm not sure if we can reach maximum power because I'm a little bit afraid of that. There you have it, it's on. And now we can control the power. That's not actually maximum power because the resistor that I've used can reach maximum power. So right now I took it out from the main outlet because it's dangerous but the reason we haven't reached the maximum power is because of this resistor here, this one, because this is the one that will control the far angle of the triac and it should be of 450 kilo ohms but this is of 500 kilo ohms so it will, won't reach the maximum value but I will put a different resistor here and try this once again but this one is a little bit smaller than that so it will be always above uh, medium value so it's a little bit dangerous to use that but like that we can reach a lot more power so let's just test that so now i've changed the resistor and we can reach a little bit more speed and if i go too much i will stop it Okay, so I just stopped it because I was afraid of going to too much revolution per second because the motor is not fixed in place. But anyway, as you can see, I was at half throttle and this can go 
very to very high speeds. So that's how you control it with AC. The connection is the same. The only thing that I'm using here is a dimmer to control the speed and you will have the schematic for this in the description below. So guys, that's how you can control this universal motor with both DC and AC voltages. Now you should know how it works, the configuration that we have in, inside, also the wire connection and all the schematic that I've used in this video, you have those below in the description if you want to make something with this kind of motor. So if you have this kind of motor from an old washing machine, you can make like an electric saw, maybe a drill or, and who knows what, because with AC, as you have seen, we have a lot of power and it's quite efficient. The only problem with this is the, are the brushes because they, they can wear out and you should change it uh, periodically. Anyway, I hope that you have learned something new and if so, consider subscribing to my channel or leave a comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey, so one more video that ends, I hope that you like it. Okay, so listen, if you want to buy my merch, my t-shirts, you have the links below for my shop and I promise that I will make more designs. And also maybe you would comment below which one you like more and what more designs you would like to see because in that way I could start designing them and post my new t-shirts. So thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next video.